Okay. I'm gonna ask a favor that we stop saying that paper clutter is scary. The truth is you are fully capable of dealing with paper. In fact, you've done much harder things in life than this. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I'm gonna show you three bins that you can add to your house that will completely solve paper clutter. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages eight through 13. And I think it's important that I reiterate that I am a former messy person. I am not a person who loves organization and then loves to teach others about it. I am the person who says, I understand these piles and this used to, <laughs> this used to live, <laughs> this used to live on the island in our kitchen and it was perpetual. It was always there. It was so frustrating. And then there was also the piles on the dining table and on my bedroom floor and all the other places that it collects. The good news is, is that I have solved this in my life and I know you can too. There's actually uh, some new bins at Target that I'm kind of excited about. So I'm gonna show you those too. The three bins that you can add to your home, it's gonna work so well. Real quick though, as, as I saw this fall off the top, one other piece that has really helped me is to get this red file folder. So a friend in my membership group had told me about how in her house they have a red file folder like this and they put all of their super important things in it. And I said, that is brilliant. And so we got one too. And so everything like passports, birth certificates, social security cards, car titles, those things, they're technically replaceable, but they are a big pain in the butt to do so. We put all of those in here now, and then this goes into our fireproof safe. The great thing is, is that if we ever have to leave our home really quickly, it's like grab the red folder, we're good to go. Now, if you already have a spot in your house where this goes, that's great, keep doing that. But if that's one of the stressors with paper is that you don't know where all these super important things are, it might be worth uh, adding one of these to your system as well. All right, but I'm actually more excited to teach you about these three bins. If you've seen any of my other paper clutter videos, it has taken other forms in the past, but it's really just figuring out what works best for you. And I actually know the reason why if you've tried this in the past and it got like overloaded with stuff, I know why it wasn't working. So we're gonna solve that problem too. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break from paper clutter to talk about dinner time because this is another thing <laughs> that can stress us out. I saw the, this meme the other day, it was so good. It said, I wish I was the person I thought I could be when I bought all this produce. <laughs> and I've just realized over the last year or so that good intentions don't cook dinner. And so today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. We first mentioned this last October and since then, I thought we were just gonna use it to get through the busy holiday season. We have not stopped ordering from HelloFresh. We just love the variety that they offer. It is so easy to use the app to pick out your meals, to make adjustments to your account. And the best part is that the meals come, they're boxed up and they come in these bags with all of the ingredients that you need. This makes grocery shopping so much easier. I no longer dread what's for dinner, what am I gonna make tonight? Because I know that every week we have four meals in our fridge ready to go. And the best part is they are healthy. <laughs> so I feel really good about the food that we're serving our family too. Tonight, we are making Parmesan chive chicken and potatoes. Okay, so we fried the chicken in this pan and then we made the sauce and it is phenomenal <laughs> what Adeline and I always rave about the different sauces that we make in all of these meals and they're all so good and they just like bring the recipes to the next level where it actually tastes like it's from a restaurant all right so Adeline and I also like to play a game where we see if we can plate it just like the picture and <laughs> make it look fancy it's our own restaurant that we're serving from okay Adeline this I was telling you this sauce okay I'm gonna have you try this tell me that is not incredible is it the sauce, right? Yeah. Isn't that so good? <laughs> I wish you could come over for dinner tonight because this is so good. Use the code MINIMALMOM. You can get 65% off your HelloFresh order, both here in the US and worldwide too. Okay, now that we got dinner figured out, let's talk bins and then I have some sample stuff too that we'll sort into them. So here's the whole idea behind this. When I come into the house with mail, uh, stuff from the kids' school, stuff from the doctor or the, I don't even know what, wherever we've been throughout the day, we come into the house with paper. The idea is that once we've gotten rid of the, re the obvious recycling and trash and stuff to shred, anything that's left, goes into one of these three bins. And so here are what the bins are. So 
I have one and you can adjust the names to what works for you, right? So I would call the top one an inbox or to process. So this is kind of like if I'm bringing the mail, I got rid of the obvious garbage, but I don't have time to go through the rest. I'm gonna put it in here. It hasn't been processed yet. The next one is to do items. So either I'm going through the items to process or I come in with the mail and I'm like, oh, okay, here's an invitation that I need to RSVP to. So I'm gonna put that into my to-do bin or action bin. So things that definitely have to get done, bills that have to get paid, order forms that need to get sent in, permission slips that need to get signed, anything like that, it requires action, goes into the to-do bin. Now, this third bin, this is where the magic <laughs> takes place. This is the paper time will tell bin. And it's larger for a reason because this is where everything else goes that I just don't know. Like, am I gonna order from that catalog? Am I gonna use those paint samples? Will I try out that recipe? Am I gonna use the business card for the guy for the new roof? Magazine comes in, am I gonna have time to read it? Kids artwork, is it super special? Should I put it in their memory bin? I don't know, let's time test it. And so we throw it in here and this this is it, this bin alone is what has solved paper in my house because the majority of paper that comes in i'm not ever actually going to do anything with right okay so let's talk about though like why why do we say paper is scary why do we get so overwhelmed and intimidated by it and usually it is because the piles are a mixture of stuff that is important and stuff that is like completely irrelevant <laughs> now, right? And so what I wanna show you is how we can take a, a stack of paper and sort it into these categories and how all of a sudden it's not so scary anymore and how there's not as many, you are imagining that there is a ton of to-do items in here and things you've forgotten about. And once we go through it, there's actually very few to-dos. Okay, so let's talk about like the different type of stuff. Okay, so a seed catalog. Am I gonna order from it this spring or not? I don't know. I'm just gonna put that in the time will tell bin. My grandma sent this Canyon book, which I think could be cool, but like, where would I put this, right? Like I could put it with my recipe books, but where else, if I don't, I don't actually know. I mean, I could put it with my canning stuff, but sometimes the basement gets wet. I'm just gonna put it in the time will tell bin. Oh, look at these beautiful paint samples that I got. I don't know if we're gonna use them or we might, it might be a little while down the road when I use these. So where would this normally live, right? Like we don't normally have a spot. So I can throw it in the time will tell bin. These were some um, extra photo cards that I wasn't sure if I was gonna send out. I still could. I'm kind of waiting to see, like at Christmas, I was like, if somebody sends me a Christmas card that I didn't send them, then I'll send them one. So this can literally live in the time will tell bin. These were some notes I took on a workshop. I don't know if I'll need to revisit it again. I'm just gonna throw it in the time will tell. More paint colors. Um, this was some homework of the kids, but I don't think they need it anymore. We'll just see. Uh, more seed catalogs, these. So this is where I start to be like, okay, how many seed catalogs do I need? I already have one in there. I'm just gonna let these ones go. We got invited to our nephew's first birthday and we're not able to make it up there, but I still wanna send a card. So this I'm gonna put in our to-do items. This is just garbage. Here's some more notes. Like, I don't know if I actually need that. I'm just gonna throw that in the time will tell. Again, because there's no action. Like, I don't have to do anything with any of those. I can choose to, but I don't have to. Here's like blank paper that can just get recycled. Um, extra scrap paper. Ooh, Amazon return, this I need to do. I'm gonna put this in my to-do items right there. A recipe my friend printed out for me. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to try it. So I'm gonna put that in there. Here is a coupon for DSW. I don't know. Like, am I, I'd, I'm just gonna throw that in the time will tell bin. Oh, here's an address. This was a Christmas card we got and we need to update their address. So that's an actual to-do item. So I'm gonna put that in my to-dos. This stuff is just all garbage. So that's gonna go recycling and, and garbage. Okay, so if I can show you this now, the actual to-dos are very little, but when I look at a huge stack of paper, I assume the worst of it and it's like, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff that I need to do. There's actually not that many <laughs> to do's. And you might have initially looked at my bins here and been like, those are way too small, right? They are small by design. And what I actually like about this system, again, I am not saying, you do not have to go out and buy acrylic bins from Target. I have ones here. I have used these in the past from the dollar store. You can use cardboard boxes. Like it, 
test it out before you invest in, in nice bins. But what I do like about these is that these don't hold very much and so they're self-limiting. I also like that I could take this over with me and go sit on the couch with it because the reason your paper, paper clutter system has failed in the past has nothing to do with the bins. The categories might have thrown you off, but it's the maintenance, right? So we put this system in place and then I actually have to go through this stuff occasionally, right? Don't worry so much about the time will tell bin. That's, that really doesn't matter. But this stuff, I actually have to go through it every once in a while. And so weekly is ideal. So how can we get in a habit of doing that? I highly recommend pairing this with something you enjoy. So maybe there's a show on Netflix that you enjoy watching. And so you can go sit on the couch, put the show on and go through your to-do and your stuff that you need to process. And then once your time will tell bin, starts to fill up a great way to deal with this is to actually flip it over and go through the bottom stuff first because usually it has timed out and you're gonna find that 98% uh, of the stuff in here you don't need and that you can just recycle it or let it go it is it's awesome like this is so cool to have a place where this stuff can live but then also just to realize over time that we can manage very little paper like Marie Kondo what she says is that her goal is to not keep anything when it comes to paper and that's been the approach I take now too so I actually put very few things in my time will tell because I've realized that I never went back and revisited them one other thing is that if something comes in and if I can deal with it very quickly, like a permission slip that needs to be signed, a card, an RSVP card to send back, if it can be done in a minute or two, I generally try to bypass the bins and just get it done right away, but that's not always possible. Okay, so one last thought on paper clutter is to think about the five-year rule. And so often we get really stressed out about, you know, maybe a return we didn't get sent back in time or a rebate we didn't send in or, you know, something that has cost us a little bit extra money or hurt feelings <laughs> because we didn't send my grandma a thank you for the birthday card or something like that. And so um, I like to think about the five-year rule. Will this thing make an impact on my life in five years? And the truth is that for 99% of this stuff, it is not gonna make a difference in the long run. And so that helps me to not put so much pressure on myself that if I do have old piles of paper floating around my house, that I don't have to put so much pressure on it and, and feel so guilty about the stuff that I might have forgotten or missed because it was in these piles floating around my house. Most of the stuff is not gonna impact the big picture of our life. So don't be so hard on yourself. You know, sometimes I'll come across like a thank you note I didn't send. and. I don't even put it in my to-do. I say, you know what, I'm gonna let that one go and then moving forward because I have a better system, I'm gonna be more on top of it. So I might have missed a Christmas or a birthday or something or the kids might have missed sending a thank you note, but moving forward, we're gonna be much more consistent with it, so it's okay. Uh, rebates or returns you forgot to do, it's okay. Five years, is it gonna make a difference to your budget? Most likely not. Now, there are some important things like taxes and different things like that. And yes, like we wanna find safe places to put those, but I really believe that if you can get a new system in place, that those things are gonna to begin to work themselves out and you're gonna be like me saying like, well, paper is just not a big deal anymore. Oh, and real quick, I do have a printable with these details on there as well. So if that's helpful to you, I'll put a link down below. And if we need to make adjustments to our system, that's okay, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, you might decide down the road that you wanna add some more categories or you want to, you know, do something like this where it's a little more robust. But if you are just getting started, I re would recommend putting these three bins in place, using it to go around your house, like Lisa from Organize 365, she'll say, take a laundry basket, go around your house, collect all of the random paper <laughs> in your house. And then that's, that's kind of like your stuff to process bin, right? Like that's all the things you need to process process it through here, sorting out stuff that's to do, that's time will tell, and that's just garbage and trash, trying not to keep any of it. And with these predetermined categories, it's gonna be so much easier. Like, you can do this. You have done much harder things than deal with paper, okay? So it's not scary, it is manageable, it will take a little time, but put on a show or a YouTube video and you'll be through it before you know it. All right, well I do have a whole nother playlist on paper clutter, especially uh, if you have some questions maybe about setting up long-term storage too, I can link to that playlist as well. But I'd love to know, have you been able to get on top of paper clutter in your house? Is it still a burden for you? Let us know anything that has worked really well for you down below, but I love you, I hope you have a really good day, and I'll see you again soon.